I've given three simple solutions to fix this entire thing. The first thing is let's take bowl games, anything outside of the New Year's Six and these first-round home playoff games, and make them weeks zero to three neutral non-conference site games. You're not going to get opt-outs too early in the season. You're going to get fan excitement, better attendance, because everyone's still in it at that point in time during the season. You still get a nice trip for some of the players, and you have to get to have that stewardship and economic uh, impact on your community, and it's probably even better for the cold-weather destinations that aren't going to be uh, feeling like a reward at the end of the season when it's cold in the wintertime. So that kind of solves that issue, at least of opt-outs, bowl games, how they still survive. The next thing is change the college football calendar. There's two windows for college football. Take the one right now in December, January, you push it all the way to May. And you limit it from 45 days, which right now it's 30 and then 15, and you create 30 days after the spring. And that allows you to do this. If you're a player who has a coaching change, if you're a player who doesn't feel like you're going to start the following season, you have the chance after you compete in the spring to opt out. You know, people talk about, hey, moving back the transfer portal window. You can't do that. You have the academic calendar that comes into play there. So you really can't mess with it. But the fact that we have two windows, why? Just make one. That's how the other sports have to deal with it. And make young men commit to a year of being to a place. So that would be my second solution for a quick fix. And the last thing is, there's got to be some sort of involvement for, I don't know if it's the college football playoff committee. I don't know if it's the NCAA or federal government. They have to come in and put down rules that allow nationally there to be a more level playing field when it comes to NIL. Because there are some teams that are doing it extremely well and others that are not. There was a report from one of the Ohio State linemen, their center, who talked about how there's this perception for Ohio State having a big NIL fund. And he's like, yeah, he's like, unless you're like a star, you don't get paid. A lot of linemen don't get paid. And he kind of talked about that. And, and, and that for a program like Ohio State, you'd figure they'd be flush with cash. They're not. And people can combat that or refute that, but that was their own, their own players saying that. I've heard from other players that played at Ohio State say that. So that's one of your biggest programs, and it's a problem for them. It's a problem for a lot of schools out there, I'm sure. So I just think there's a few simple solutions. For whatever reason, we don't have enough good leadership to step up and take the reins and make those changes. You know, another interesting piece of this that, that became kind of evident was – the, the relevance of agents and it's it it i'm i, I don't want to say i'm baffled by it but i'm mortified by it that agents are now negotiating for players in college and and actually thinking that a agent could make a call to a coach or to a you know to a department and had the conversation about what terms, you know, almost basically holding a team hostage in terms of if that kid will opt out of playing in the game. Like, think about this. You have kids that may possibly opt out of playing in the game and they're not an NFL prospect at the moment in time. See, that's where, to me, this all goes off the rails, is that you're not just getting guys that are, talking about opting out that are are leaving leaving school you got guys that are threatening transfer portal if they don't basically if the demands of what the agencies and the agents are going after don't don't comply I, and it made me start thinking well if if that's what where this is all heading then what's that doesn't that mean that the next the next evolution of this is that agents are doing that for off season, spring training, spring ball, summer workouts, it, beginning of the season, training camp, before the first game starts. Oh, after the first game, after the second game. Like, it's almost like where does it begin and where does it end where we're at now in college athletics? Because it well, almost. Oh, oh. Go ahead. I could tell you why that's part of the issue. Because we skirt over the idea that the NCAA says NIL is not pay for play. That's a lie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, if it's not pay for play, okay, that's fine. 
then where do you feel like their name, image, and likeness gets any sort of brand or promotional ability? It's from their play on the football field. It's from their co-branding or partnership with that university. And so the entire reason why they're known or able to endorse a product or service or company, whatever the case may be, the reason why they're marketable is their brand built on the field, on the court, on something. So the, the, that's part of the issue is we're, we're like dancing around this idea of, well, it can't be pay for play. You can't pay a kid to play in the bowl game. You can't pay a kid to play during the season or pay for this. It's like, well, uh, okay, but why are they even able to be paid in the first place? Right. Just because a law says it because there's a, a court ruling? No, it's because they have a certain status because of their athletic ability. And that's the problem is we're trying to implement a pro model without implementing pro rules. And so another example of a reason, as you bring up agents, is there is no verification process on these agents. None. When you look at how the that's NFL so is set true. up, there's an NFL PA so where true. the agent has to be certified by the union. Yep. There is a process to go through, and I'm not saying it's a rigorous process. But you have to go through a process. There is checks and balances in place. You, see, you know, we heard about the uh, contract situation with Russell Wilson. Guess what? The NFLPA got involved, right? We don't have any of that going on. And so if a player gets wrong because they sign a contract with an agent that goes in perpetuity, meaning for the rest of their life because they don't have to know how to read a contract, they don't understand what it states, that's a problem. There's no one to check that. And there's a lot of bad people in this world who take advantage of these young men and young women. So any Joe Blow can hit up a college. Any kid. Joe Blow. Jonas Knox can now be an agent. That's great. Yeah. In the Isn't world of NIL and high school in some states and college uh, and others, like there's not any sort of certification process that needs to happen. Now, some of the agents, are, are they go by the right protocols. They're certified by the state. They'll show you all, their, you know, all the documentation, things they need to have. Others don't. It's unk. They Unk's used to my agent. Called, Go talk to yeah, Unk. Absolutely. You know? They were called handlers. Yeah. That, I mean, by the way, the old this word is, was handlers. <laughs> this has gone on for a long time, but now it's taken shape in the form of a business. And I get, uh, it's so funny, man. So many like different kids were in law school where you tell me, hey, you want to get an NIL? I'm going to turn him like, I was like, no, you don't. No, you don't. I was like, don't get into that thinking like, because you're around college kids and this. I was like, don't do that. Like, go, go get something that's sustainable. Go get something that you actually be able to help and do good. Like this whole business has become so dirty and it's, it's flipped. It's swung where players had no power, no player empowerment. And now it's swung the complete opposite way where things like VAR is talking about are happening. You're going, what in the hell is going on? And so look, I, I, my takeaway is this over the semifinal two games, we had some unbelievable football. Yes, we, we have unbelievable storylines. It, it makes it so exciting to watch next Monday for the national championship. But that just cast a shadow over top of like really the truth of college football is that I don't want to say a tipping point because it's still a great sport, but there needs to be some adults that come in and fix this and not the adults that got us here. Mm. All right. I know there's a lot of people that might want to try to help out and fix it. But there's too many people since I've been involved in this whole process in different ways that have only their best interest in mind. I can't tell you how many people are like, hey, I want to help out. We want to do a club. We want to do this. We want to do this. And you know what? Every single time you got to the root of the issue, it was self-serving why there is some firm that does this, some firm, some company, something that does this. It was all self-serving. Mm. It's just all because they wanted a cut of the pie. No one is standing up and saying, I'm just doing this to help out the players. And I want to be a good person, do what's right, and try to help them in that, and in that capacity. That's the reality of what's happening right now.